Hi, this is Amy from the Alti Store. We get a lot of callers asking about how to figure out how much solar and batteries they need to do an off-grid system. Well, the first step to do is to create a loads list. And we've done several videos about how to do loads lists, and we've got a great loads list calculator online that you can use as well. Now I'm going to show you how to use a kilowatt meter to help you create this loads list. A kilowatt meter is a wonderful device where you would plug it into the outlet and then you plug your, your device that you're trying to figure out how much power it uses into the kilowatt meter. There's a few different versions available and you can check them out online. And what uh, I'm going to show you is how to use it when you've got a device that uses a variable amount of power. Uh, any, any device that you use or appliance that you use in your house is going to be UL listed. So it will have a label on the back that shows you how many watts or how many volts and amps. And from that you can calculate volts times amps equals watts. So you can tell from the label how much power it's rated to use. But that label isn't always accurate or it's not always the, the same. So for instance, a refrigerator will be turning on and off throughout the day depending if the fridge is cold enough. So if you just were to say, all right, the, it's rated at a certain wattage, multiply that by 24 hours, you would have probably doubled the amount of power that you actually are using. So using a device like a kilowatt meter will help you get a very accurate reading. How many watt hours or kilowatt hours does this actually use in a day? And from that, you can calculate out your, your solar system. So I'm going to do a quick little demo of my kitchen to show you what it takes to make my breakfast. Uh, we've got a video that we've already done on how to use the kilowatt meter on your refrigerator, so you can check that one out. I'm not strong enough to carry the fridge in here, so we'll use that for, for the fridge. And um, I've got a microwave, a toaster, and a coffee maker. Now, if you see, I've got them plugged into two different uh, kilowatt meters. I have my microwave and my, my uh, coffee maker. Now, interestingly, these aren't on right now. They're just sitting here, and they're using... Uh, a, a few watts. So my microwave is using two watts to power the clock and the uh, the coffee maker, I'm not even sure what it's doing, but it's drawing four watts. So if we're planning an off-grid system, you've got to realize that you need to take that into consideration. If you only are planning for the device to be using power when you're actively using it, you're going to be underestimating. So if I take my 4 watts plus my 2 watts, that's 6 watts times 24 hours, that's 144 watt hours that I need to account for when I'm planning my, my off-grid system. All right. So now let's actually turn these on and see how the actual usage compares to what their rated usage was. Now my microwave on the label said it was 10.3 amps at 120 volts. So that equals 1,236 watts. Let's turn it on. And we'll look at the kilowatt meter and see if that was accurate. I see I'm using 1,257 watts. That's a little bit higher than what it was rated for. So if I had just trusted the label on the back, I would have slightly undersized the system. So it's really nice to get an accurate test of this. So let me stop this and I'm going to plug in my toaster there instead. So ready to go with my toaster and my coffee maker. So the coffee maker said on the back that it was rated for 1500 watts. So let's give that a whirl. So it's going to start up and this information is also very good to have for when you're planning your inverter because your inverter needs to know how many watts it needs to be able to support both at a consistent how much it's always going to be using and how much it might surge so using a kilowatt meter uh, can can also be helpful to see what the initial startup power is as well so again it was rated for 1500 watts 
and I'm using 1265 so it was rated a little bit higher than what it's actually using. So let's see how long it takes to actually make my cup of coffee. I hope it's soon. Uh, so meanwhile I've got uh, my toaster plugged into a second one. Now the reason I'm using two separate ones is the kilowatt meter is rated for up to uh, just over 1500 watts so if I were to try to plug in both of these and turn them both on at the same time I would overpower my kilowatt meter. So you can have one kilowatt meter and just use it uh, one at a time throughout your equipment or like I'm doing here just have high power things plugged into the, its own. So I'm going to start my toast and the toaster was rated for 900 watts and I'm using right around 770, 760 watts. So again that toaster was a little bit overrated for what it's, what it's actually doing to make toast. So we're going to just kind of sit here and wait and see how long it takes to make my breakfast. See how much accumulated watt hours it's going to use and then I can use that information to to figure out how much power I need to figure that I need to make my breakfast. Now if I don't have a kilowatt meter that's, that adds up the, um, the, the accumulated watt hours for me, I can actually do the math myself. So if I know that my toaster is using 700 watts, I can multiply it out by how many minutes it takes to make my, my toast because um, watt hours is watts times hours. Well, we're going to be doing minutes to make my, my toast, otherwise <laughs> that'll go terribly wrong. Uh, so, so, 60, uh, so one hour divided by 60 minutes equals 0 0.016 hour per minute. So if I know that, that it takes two minutes to make my toast, I can just multiply that 700 watts times 0 0.016 times two minutes. So, uh, but because I've got the kilowatt hour meter, I can just have it uh, figure that out for me. So my coffee is ready for me to actually make. So there we go, we've got the coffee going and we see that the, the wattage dropped way down. So I'm still making my coffee, but once the water got hot enough, it dropped way down to, to just three watts while it's actually uh, pouring it. So even though it's still making the coffee, the wattage went down, now it's preparing for the ne next cup of coffee and it's working its way back up so it's probably going to go back high again to heat up the, the next cup. So there we go, we're up at 729. Uh, my toaster is still going, it's, it's up at 782 watts. So that should be done pretty soon, I hope. I'm getting a little hungry. There we go, my coffee and my toast are done at the same time. The toaster went down to zero watts, the coffee maker settled back down to five watts, and so I can go and set and look at kilowatt hours on the meters to see how much accumulated time it, it uh, how much accumulated power it used. Okay, so I now have looked and to make my toast it used 0.03 kilowatt hours. So a kilowatt hour is 1,000 watt hours, so 0.03 kilowatt hours is 30 watt hours. And my coffee was 0.05 kilowatt hours, which would be 50 watt hours. So I can add those up and know that it, it took 80 watt hours to make my, my breakfast. So I will now add that to my loads list, and I'm just going to go around my house and figure everything that I'm going to be using in my house that I'm going to be trying to bring off grid and I'll get a really nice accurate loads list. And then from there, I can figure out how much solar I need. So we've got other videos that bring you to the next steps after you figure out what your loads are. So check those out. And um, please, uh, if, you, if you found this helpful, give us a like and a share and subscribe to our channel at Alti Store. And also go to our website, altistore.com, where we've been making renewable doable since 1999.